Well, hello, Panda Box users. This is Henry Clark, Henry Clark's channel. <laughs> Hear that music in the background, right? That music was done using what Band of Box 21 calls utility tracks, right? And these utility tracks, I think what happened was that Band of the Box, they realized that everybody didn't want to create a song with just a, a, a bass and a piano and a drum set or one guitar or something like that. You needed to add more stuff. I know I've always added a lot of other instruments to the songs that I do. So with these utility tracks, right, you can actually, it gives you 16 additional tracks in Band in the Box that you could, you know, you can generate real tracks, you can add MIDI to those tracks, or you can do, it's, it's a lot of other stuff that you can do. Now, this tutorial is about how I use utility tracks, which are only came out in Band in the Box 2021. So if you have 2021, you're in luck because now you have a lot more tracks that you can actually experiment with and put in your compositions together. And again, this track behind me was done using utility tracks, right? I, I think I, I think I composed this song with like 14 tracks. But I'm just gonna give you a, a, a demo of how I actually went through creating these tracks and exporting these tracks over into uh, my DAW. Okay, again, I'm not a, a, I don't use real band. I use sonar. It just gives me a bit more flexibility. I'm, I'm used to it, something like that. So again, so, oh, oh, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. If you like what I do, please subscribe. But again, this tutorial is about how I use utility tracks, the new utility tracks in 2021 in creating compositions. So again, hold on tight. I'm gonna head on over to Band in the Box and we can get started on how Henry does utility tracks in Band in the Box. See you in a second. Okay, I'm back. So again, this tutorial is about how I use utility tracks, right? How I use utility tracks. And utility tracks are something that's in Band in the Box 2021. So if you, have, you don't have 2021, you, you're out of luck there because they didn't start till 2021. But Band, but Band in the Box gave you these utility tracks, and it's actually 16 tracks, and you can record, um, you, you can record vocals on it, you can record MIDI on it, you can re, um, render um, real tracks on it, and so on and so forth, right? Now I use it to render additional real tracks on it, right? And the reason why is because I record in my DAW. I, re, I use my DAW for my recording purposes for vocals and any any, any other instrument I want to use, I do it in my DAW. But just to show you how you can use these real tracks, or I'm sorry, these utility tracks, right? You know, I just want to give you a quick demonstration of how, how I did that and how you could do that in your compositions going forward. So what I did was um, I had this pattern, right? First of all, I want you to see my mixer screen over here. And I can take my mixer screen and I can only show tracks that are active. So right now I found a loop. Um, my band in the box got these weird names, right? Electronic Chill Out Pop or whatever that means, right? But it's got three loops in it, a guitar and a piano, right? And I thought I'd play around with that, right? And again, my mixer window here, nice thing about the new mixer window is I can actually take this mixer window and I can expand it if I need to. So I can expand it. Like I said, right now, I'm only showing tracks that are actually active, ones that I'm actually using, okay? But I can just go to the window here and I can actually float the mixer window, take it off, and I can just bring, bring the, um, the window back up and so on and so forth, right? I like the window over here in the corner of the screen. I kind of like that a whole lot. But anyway, so I found this loop that I like, kind of went like this. I'm going, oh, I like that, right? You know, just trying to put a track together, right? Um, the first four bars were intro, right? And I kind of started my little singing thing, you know, right up in here. How do I find the words to help you ease your mind and let you know my love will stand the test of time? I went, okay, I like that. I really like that. And I want to take that. I'm going to expand on that because right now all I have is three loops, a guitar, and a piano. And if you've heard any of my music, you know that I want to use more. And this is where these utility tracks can really come in handy and me adding extra tracks to it, right? So what did I do from there, right? Well, like I said, I want to set the song up. I want to kind of arrange it. And just to save time, I've got three uh, templates that I'm using just to show you in this tutorial, right? So what I did was I, I'm, I'm going to open up another tutorial that's got some breaks in it, right? So this tutorial right here has some breaks in it. And just to give you an example. So now I showed you what it sounded like initially, right? Again, it was just electronic chili pop. It had three loops, a guitar, and a piano, right? Well, I added a bass and I added drums also just to give it a little bit more of dynamics, right? So again, so if you listen to it now, right, you'll see that at bar one, it starts out just, just kind of, a, you know, acoustics, right? You know, just a percussion loop and the guitar itself, right? When you get up in the here, again, I'm back to my bringing my guitar in, right? Um, at bar 13, I brought the piano in. It's feeling out a little bit better. It's feeling out a little bit better, right? You know, 
And when I got to the hook at bar 21, I brought in the bass and I brought in the drums, right? Again, but that wasn't enough for me. I wanted actual, I wanted more in there than just that. Even though it was a good lift, it wasn't. And if you see when I get to bar 21, This is where utility tracks come in very handy at. Look at my window over here on the right. What it is, it's full, isn't it? If you look across here, right, it's full. I don't have any more of the standard tracks to use, right? But now I can use my utility tracks. So if I open up my eye here, the little eye right over here on the right, you'll see I've got all these utility tracks at my disposal. So just to save time, I'm gonna go ahead and create three utility tracks. I think I'm gonna create an organ. I'm gonna create a synth pad. I'm gonna create a... I'll just do strings. This is those three, right? So how do you do that with the utility tracks? Well, I'm going to show my active tracks, right? So if, if I go to utility one, notice it shows utility one right here, right? Now, this is important. And also, it's very important also is that when you, in, in Band of Box 21, I didn't do it a lot in Band of Box 2020 and, and below, but it's important that I set up a folder in Band of Box 2021 because what happens is that these tracks here will get saved as waves it won't have a name, but they'll get saved as waves, right? And they'll be in that folder along with the standard .sgu file, right? So again, so for practical purposes of knowing where you are without searching for stuff, right? Just create a folder, whatever directory you use to keep your songs in. Just create a folder of that song right up front. So anyways, okay, so now we're at, I'm going to create uh, a, an organ. I think I'm going to create an organ, right? So I'm going to go to Utility 1, and I'm going to put an organ on the Utility track. How do I do that, right? I'll just do Utility. I will right click, I will generate, and I'm going to select what I want to generate, right? I have some already saved, so I'm just going to put, um, I'm going to put organ in here, right? So I'm just going to put organ in here. And um, the one I used previously was organ 2692 was an organ that I used, right? So I'm going to go ahead and use that. And now, even though it, it popped up here first, but it's actually going to go down, it's going to show up in a utility track. I don't know why it does that. But it's going to show up in the utility track as but it's going to show up as utility it's not going to show up as organ it's going to show up as utility and you will see see now this is the actual organ here on utility one and you want to check it out you can see if i play because it's not muted so if i play you will hear the actual organ notice the organs playing now this is really, really important, folks, is that it says utility one, right? We can't have that because as you start adding extra utility tracks, right, you need to have the name so you will remember what it was when you actually created it, right? So I'm going to take this utility one, and I'm going to go to the track settings, and I'm going to rename the track title, and I'm going to name it organ because that's what it is. It's an organ, right? Then I'm going to go back. And I'm going to, not just the, the track, the, the description of the track, and I'm going to name it organ, but I'm also going to name it the real track number that I actually use. And in this case, I use the real track number 2692. And you will see why that comes in handy. So now I have utility track one is no longer called utility track one. It is now called organ, and it's organ 2692 that I used, right? Okay, so what now? I'll just, like I said, I'll just put in another, I'll put in two more and just to show you guys how it works, right? So again, if you look at my utilities now, right, you'll see I have organ here. So let me select utility track. Let's do another utility track, right? So I think I will do, um, let's do background vocals. So I'm going to do background vocals, right? So I'm going to go here, I'm going to generate. And I'm going to type in my filter string. I'm going to type in vocal. And it's going to show me the vocals, right? And I want 3027 is what I want. Uh, there's 3027. And if I bring up 3027, right, it's, it's rendering that, that vocal track. So it's going to be all, everything is going to be in sync. It's going to be nice. It's going to, actually, it's going to sound great when it's all done. But right now, it's rendering that track for me to use. And again, the vocals are going to be utility too. Now, see what it's called. It's called utility two. That's not going to work for me, right? I mean, I'm going to go back to my track settings. I'm going to rename the track title. And I'm going to call it BK vocals or background vocals is what I'm going to call it, right? And I'm going to go back and I'm going to rename it again. I'm going to name the, the track description as BK vocals. And, and I use BK vocals 3027 is what I use. So now I'm using BK vocals 27. And I will do one more utility track, utility three. And let's put in um, a bright guitar. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to select, I'm going to generate again. I'm going to select generate. And I'm going to type in guitar. 
And let me see what I get. Guitar of uh, acoustic is what I used. And nothing came on because I misspelled it wrong. <laughs> guitar. Guitar acoustic AC. And my number for that was uh, 1828. Do I see you getting about to say 1828? There's an 1828. So I'm going to use that one. And again, the reason why I had these written down at the same time, just just so you know, right? You know, I mean, I can experiment. I can pull any guitar in that I want, but just so I have just the same time, I just want to show you some that I use, right? Again, what is it called? Utility three. I can't have that, right? So I'm going to change the name again. I'm going to change the, the rename the track title to Guitar Acoustic. I'll just call it ACC, and I'm going to change the description of the track to Guitar. ACC and what did I use? I used 1828. So that's what I use. Again, why is that important? If you look at my mixer now, you will see these tracks by name. Again, this is going to be important in a second. It may not be important at first right now because it could be utility one, utility three. But think about it. If you start doing all the way up to utility track 16, right, you'll have utility tracks one through 16. And if you don't know the name of them, then you won't know what they are. And this is really important in the next step. So, and also notice I floated my mixer just to show you because my mixer did not show. It, well, it shows it right now, but if, as I started getting more and more uh, tracks in, right, the mixer will start scrunching up, get tighter and tighter and tighter. So now I can bring it over here and I can show you fully what it looks like. So I, I just for demonstration purposes, I put in three utility tracks, right? And I'm going to bring up another template just to show you how many utility tracks I actually use so you can see what I'm talking about when I say you could easily get confused. So again, so hold on one second while I bring in the next template that I'm going to show you how many tracks I actually use. Oh, and by the way, all of these tracks are playing. If I just go ahead and if I render these tracks and just generate, right, these tracks will play. I don't have them muted, so they will automatically start playing. And there they are. I don't worry about the levels right now. It's the sound that I'm after and not the levels. Again, so one second and I'm going to bring in the third template and you will see what I'm talking about. Right. Okay, so I'm back now. So I brought in my third template, which was the actual template that I used in putting this song together, right? Look over here on the right side of the screen. Look at how many tracks I have. I have loop one, loop two, loop three, guitar, piano, bass, drums, organ, synth pad, acoustic piano, another piano, in other words, an acoustic piano, a bright guitar, acoustic guitar, background vocal strings, guitar solo two, and a guitar solo, right? Again, see how the window's starting to scrunch up, right? But if I show you in this version here, not there, not there, mix her. If I show you here, this is what I'm talking about. See, if you notice, here are all of my tracks, and, and notice how I named them so that I know what they are, right? Well, again, why is that important? Because what I need to do now is I need to get these tracks and get these tracks over into my DAW, whether I'm using Zona, whatever I'm using, real bad, whatever it is, right? But I need to do that, and I need it by name. So once I do, once I have the tracks that I that I wanted to add, and again, I filled it up. And if you listen to it, I know it's gonna sound it's gonna sound like a jumble right now. If you listen to it, everything is playing at the same time. You be like, oh my god, yeah, everything is playing at the same time. But I'm not worried about that. I don't care about that because I'm gonna make those adjustments when I when I bring it over to my doll and this is an important point too is that I'm getting ready to render these tracks right so that I can move them over to my doll my thing is always I always render at 90 dB and I always pan center I always I don't pan hard left or hard right I pan center try to get as close to center as possible anyway it might be, if it's a little off that's okay but I pan center is what I do. I don't worry about reverb and effects. If it's on it, that doesn't matter because it usually sounds pretty good anyway. But I make sure that, that I'm in that 90 range, dB range. And the reason why I do that, and, and I've seen in discussions where people say it doesn't matter. If you're going to mix within Band in the Box, it probably doesn't matter. But if you're going to bring it to your DAW, you want that sound nice and hot and clean is what you want. The last thing you want to do is have a WAV file that's low um low volume and now all of a sudden you've got to use gain on that wave file other than the fader in order to bring that wave file up so i use 90 db whenever i'm bringing all of my tracks over so now it's time to make these tracks available for my doll right so i'm going to go here to audio and i'm going to go um, export as an audio file and i get this window here right now this is an important window here the main thing is that you i want them to be wave files i want them to be in stereo and i want them to be 24-bit files but I also, right here, I want one file 
per track. One file per track. When it says one file per track, that means it's going to separate and bring, give me all these as separate tracks. That is exactly what I want. So, and, and I, I could talk about acid, but it'd take a little bit longer. Acid, acid waves, a lot of times, acid waves can create, they, they can be um, susceptible to um, um, following tempo changes, uh, following key changes, sometimes if it's really good acid info or waves, right? Again, I'm not going to get into that here, but that's, that's I check it off anyway. So as, when I get ready to go render, though, this is important. Once I render, right, remember I told you I said I wanted you to create a folder in your song. I created a folder called render. Look at these tracks I have that if the abandoned box is already saved. What do they call them? You know, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. I don't know what the instruments those are, right? So I created a folder called render. I'm going to open this folder up, and this is where I want my tracks to go. I want my tracks to go into the render folder, right? So when my tracks will get rendered, they will go into the render folder. This is really, really important, right, to set that folder up. So now I'm going to hit render, and the tracks are rendering. Now, I'm not going to sit here, and we're not going to sit here and make you watch all 14 of these tracks render, because that's kind of a waste of time, right? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a break. I'm going to come back, and I'm going to show you what it looks like after it's rendered. But notice that it's rendering. Notice if you look right here, you will see that it's generating the real tracks right now. And by the way, this is much faster than it used to be also. I looked at some of the, some of the earlier versions of Band in the Box that I used. Render took quite a while. So it's a whole lot faster this time. I don't even improved it. The, the rendering engine or whatever, right? But I'm going to be back in a second. And I'm going to show you what happens after I have all of my tracks rendered, okay? So again, I will be right back. Okay, so we got these, we got our tracks rendered, right? I kind of want to speed this up now because I know you guys be like, it's so long, right? But I tell you what, the reason why it's longer is because I try to show you guys every step that I take, every every mouse click I make, and the reason why is because that I think that helps you out a lot instead of me just kind of rushing through it, telling you what to do. I'm trying to show you at the same time. So again, so all of my tracks are rendered. It took a little bit of time to do that. But all of my tracks are rendered there in my render folder. Like I said, I wanted them to be right, and they are rendered by name. Guitar, notice guitar loop one, two, three. Organ, string, synth pad, solo, drums, background vocals, bass, acoustic piano, acoustic bright guitar. And again, the reason why I do that is name them. You gotta name them, man, because if you don't, they would. This would have just said utility, 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 and we did not want that. So those are done. So now I can close this window. This is the window I use to render the audio file. This is done. I am done with my band in the box portion, right? Because I'm going to use these in my DAW. So what, remember, what did I do? I made sure that my volumes were at 90 dB so that I didn't have to adjust the waves in my DAW. So again, really quickly, I'm going to speed on over here. I'm taking it to my DAW. I'm going to show here's it, here's it in my DAW, right? I went to that folder when I put this together. I went to that folder in band in the box. Uh, okay, right here, this render folder. And those are the tracks there. I have dragged these tracks over into my DAW. And just to give you a little quick example, if I take this track and just drag, I'm just going to drag it over, right? What is this? This is some type of guitar or whatever, you know, because I've already got it loaded. That's why I'm just not that concerned about it. But again, I just, I'm just going to take and drag these tracks over to my DAW, and then I can adjust them the way I want them to play and when I want them to play, right? So again, what, as far as my composition goes, the track was rendered from start to finish, but I only wanted to play in certain times. So if you listen to a little bit, I'm going to play a little bit of my track for you so you can see what I'm talking about. I started I started the track off with... Oh, oops, 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 oops. <laughs> I started the track off with a percussion loop and just the guitar, right? So again, so I started that out. Um, I started singing it uh, at the, the, what, the uh, six, eight second mark, 10 second mark or whatever, right? You know, and again, I'm only using just percussion loop and guitar. As we move down further, again, I'm, I'm just trying to hurry up. Trying to help get through this, right? Like I said, I don't want the video to be too long, and it's already like over 20 minutes. Um, when I got to this area here, right? So I bought in, I bought in some drums, heavier drums. All this is production, but remember, all these are loops that, that we created when we rendered. So my drums are in here now, right? I take and I'm gonna go, like I said, I'm gonna go forward. Then when I got up in here, I decided to bring in some pianos just to give it a new dimension. in now. All this is to give it a new dimension, but bro, these were the same uh, real tracks that I rendered so that I would have that flexibility. And then, of course, when I got to the hook, I bring the sync in, right? You know, I bring the bass in, I bring in another acoustic piano, I bring in another guitar, I just bring everything in at, at the hook when I get to the hook. Background, almost everything's there. Yeah, 
The only other thing you don't hear at that point is you don't hear the uh, the guitar solo. Didn't want to solo the whole thing you know, during the whole time, right? I only wanted to solo at a certain portion, which is when I decided to bring the solo in. I think I was at the, maybe the three minute mark or something. And if you look here, you see guitar solo highlighted here, right? Let me go find my little guitar solo, right? Because I thought, and I thought that was a pretty good touch to the song. I put it like that, right? So at the 253 mark, I decided to slowly think about when I wanted a guitar solo, which was after the second hug. So again. <laughs> That's my guitar solo in there, right? Again, I'm, I'm not gonna play the whole song. It's, it's you guys can check it out, and it's all my actually it's all my uh, my homepage for uh, my YouTube, so my home YouTube channel page. If you guys want to check out the whole song, but I just wanted to show you guys how I use utility tracks, how I render the tracks so that I can import them into my DAW. Remember that I started out from a pattern, a basic pattern that had what it had three loops and a piano and a and and, and a guitar. I think is what it had, you know. And I, of course, I've added bass, drum, strings, another piano, another guitar, a guitar solo, background vocals, the whole nine yards, right? And I did that through a rendering. Now, you can do this if you don't have Band in the Box 2021, and which was old way. And I had a video talking about how I fattened the sound up. And you can do it by, you know, creating different Band in the Box um, song templates and adding extra, extra instruments from there. But 2021 is great for me, me and be able to add these just right on the fly. So again, so I can just keep adding utility tracks, utility tracks, rendering. Of course, like I said, you can do MIDI and all the other, other things that are associated with that. But this is a quick tutorial on how I use uh, utility tracks in my demo. So again, hope this helps. Like I said, I didn't want it to be too long. I'm trying to really cut it down. I'm probably speeding what I'm saying. But I hope this helps. If you have any questions, of course, you can always put them in my uh, put them put them up in the video channel where you see this video at right and just remember now I am not banning in the box if some people have come to me asking me some technical questions about banning the box itself I am not banning the box tech support <laughs> you know I will help you I will help you when I can but I am not banning the box tech support they don't pay me to be support either right what I do is my tutorials I show you how I use banning the box from a production perspective and how I can and I can help you get through some of the screens so you can do the things that I do and you can take it even a bit further. Okay. So anyway, I hope you like what I do. I, you will subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time. Bye.